Hi, Fiberista. Hey, I'm so glad to be back. I tell you, I decided to start off with uh, my beach retreat where I brought my spinning wheel and my fiber and my girlfriend and I just sat around and made art. There was lots to be inspired by. I, I, my new favorite time to be at the beach is in the winter. So I got a lot done and I'm here to share with you some demos of some of that yarn that I spun while I was at the beach. Uh, I brought lots of raw locks and just a bin full of fiber. I brought my blending board and my spinning wheel and, and I'm really excited to share with you. So here it goes. So for this yarn, um, I, I'm making some art yarns and I'm making some art yarns with weaving in mind and I want to have some textures but some thin spinning. So I'm starting off with some dyed locks. Now what I tend to do is put those textures and colors, I want those to be on the outside of the roll log. So I kind of press these locks in with my brush and what I'm trying to do is get it way down into the teeth. So when I card over it, it's not going to damage those locks. I want to keep that texture. So this is some, uh, I, it's either milk silk or soy silk. I can't remember, but it is something I dyed. And I'm adding those as well. And I'm pressing down with the brush. Now the brush will pull those textures in there. And I don't want it too lumpy, but I, I don't mind some lumps because I want a little bit of texture here. So here's a little bit of banana fiber I have. Now I get this uh, from mills in India. They make saris out of this banana fiber. So it comes kind of in thrums, like thread-like pieces. So I'm taking it and I'm carding it with my hand cards. And what that does is that breaks up the threads a little bit and makes it more fiber-like. Hand cards tend to break up the fibers and smooth it out. And the brush tends to just push the fibers into the teeth. So now I'm adding some hand dyed farm wool. I believe this is some rambouillet and I'm just kind of dragging it along. And again, I don't, I, I want a little bit of texture, but not a lot. So the hand cards I'm passing over that to kind of brush out some of that texture a little bit. I'm coming back uh, with the stuff off the hand cards just to put it back and fill in those spaces. And then I'm using the brush to kind of push it back into the teeth so I can load up this blending board a little bit more. So I'm adding some more farm wools. I believe this is more Rambouillet uh, that I've dyed in the green color. And again, I'm just break up some of those chunks and get that texture in there and, and smooth it out just a little bit. I don't mind a little bit of texture again. I'm going for an art yarn and I'm just taking what's off the cards and filling in some of the blank spaces and then using the brush to push it into the teeth. Maybe smooth it out a little bit more with the hand cards. Again, filling in the spaces from the hand cards. Next, I'm adding some Angelina. Gotta love the sparkle. So again, that, that doesn't need any drum, uh, hand cards. It's just the brush to push it in. This is one little mohair lock that I added in. This is some uh, recycled sari fiber that again comes from the mill, but this they've hand carded this out to give it a little more texture. I like to add it in to, to give kind of a tweed effect because all those colors in, in a group kind of tends to become a neutral. Really loading up on these textures, using my hand cards to smooth it out a little bit and then smoothing it down, pushing it into the teeth with my brush so I can add more texture. Next, I'm adding some undyed farm wools. Uh, I believe this is more rambouillet. Uh, and and it's, I like it because it has a little bit of crimp still in there and I don't wanna lose too much of that, but this is gonna be my base fiber for the most part. For the most part, the yarn's gonna look like this white fiber with lots of other colors and textures in there. So I'm trying to really load up the blending board with this fiber and smoothing out some of that to kind of disperse it a little bit more across the blending board. Press it in with the brush so I can load up even more fiber on there. Filling in the spaces where needed. Again, 
again, the, the hand cards kind of smooth out the texture a little bit. The brush tends to push it in. And again, I'm, since this is gonna be my base, I wanna fill in all the holes. And then just pushing that fiber in with the brush to make sure I have more room to add more fiber. I'm feeling it out to see exactly how much more I have left. So here I'm taking some some undyed locks that I have. I believe this is some Teeswater locks. And I'm, I'm just kind of placing those randomly again, just like I did with the first layer. I'm going to push it in. I want to keep that lock texture, but I didn't put it in the beginning because I wanted that white lock texture to be kind of part of this layer of white wool that still becomes the base. But again, I'm going for an art yarn, so I want lots of texture. And this is some recycled sari ribbon that I'm adding in. Now this stuff is a little fragile and it's kind of weird to, to put it on the blending board, but it's fragile enough to where I can really cram it down between the teeth and it just becomes part of that roll log. Um, of course, that means I'm not going to be able to stretch it as much, but it'll add a wonderful texture and it'll just be kind of in the roll log, so I'll just take it as it comes when I'm spinning off that roll log. Okay, one more last layer, and this is some kind of off-white, kind of grayish Montadale that I have. And I just wanted to add one little layer to lock in those top textures that I have. So just a quick little layer, I'm going to brush it in there to smooth it out and then push it in with the brush and then I'm ready to pop a little bit more I decided I was going to fill in just a little more again mostly this layer is since it's got a long staple it's going to be kind of to lock those textures in on the top and it also adds a little bit more dimension so here I am pulling it off the the blending board and I'm using the brush to kind of dig those fibers out from the teeth. So I can pick up some of those uh, locks, but sometimes I need to get that brush to kind of grab it in. And I stretch it as much as I can, because if you stretch the fibers out a little bit to roll it, it's going to hold that roll log together a little bit better. Again, picking out the teeth to get all those textures that I've crammed down in there into that roll log. Uh, to stretching it to kind of lock that roll log into place. All right, so this is the final yarn. Um, I'm going to show you how I spin that uh, coming up. You can see lots of textures. I did it as an auto wrap. Lots of blues and browns, a little contrast in the color, but again, I'm going for textures. And this was spun with weaving in mind. So I want to use these, the, all this texture and all this in the weaving. All right, so Stay tuned because in the next video, I'm going to show you how I spin this up.